Hello everyone and welcome to a new festive episode from the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we are looking at the Krampus. Lots of people asked for this one after the Halloween special episode, and now it's finally here, just in time for the second episode of our holiday season. For those unaware, the Krampus is a horned, humanoid European festive figure who punishes poorly behaved children, as opposed to Santa Claus, who rewards well behaved children. It has been gaining in popularity lately, and has even shown up on movies and TV a lot in the last decade. Now, we will be looking at this festive terror and see what it would be like as a living creature. So, Let's see what this bad boy has in store for us. High in the Alps, a creature known as the Krampus descends from the mountains, keeping an eye on any that may cross its path. While closely related species such as the alpine ibex have been observed rising on two legs to reach food, Bipes capra atrox has become entirely bipedal and its hind limbs have become appropriately stronger and its hooves have become wider to better support its weight. Its anterior hooves have adapted into a shape very roughly similar to hands. While lacking pretty much all dexterity and strength usually associated with hands, these hooves are competent enough at holding and manipulating food out of the Krampus's reach. Its long tongue evolved as a way to better reach food and help the goat manipulate it as it feeds. Its elongated teeth, resembling fangs, were originally a way to help the Krampus hold food and dig into the peels of fruit, similar to other frogivore animals. With the emergence of its hand-like front hooves, the teeth are no longer needed for this purpose but are still bared by the Krampus as a part of its territorial displays. Like most goat species, the diet of the Krampus is quite varied, including leaves, grasses, twigs and fruit, among other vegetable matter. Sometimes, Krampus will collect fallen fruit that has spent too long in the ground and has begun fermenting. Upon consuming this fruit, the Krampus will experience effects similar to other goats. A drunk Krampus will be recognizably tipsy and may attempt to playfully spar with other members of their species, or even other species entirely if possible. The results of this tend to be quite disastrous for all involved. However, Krampus seem to favor the leaves of the birch tree, which they will feast on whenever available. If possible, Krampus will even take as many branches with them as they can, eating them at their leisure. Should a Krampus feel threatened or bothered, however, it will not hesitate to throw them at whatever has angered them as part of a territorial display, before attacking with its powerful horns. Whenever Krampus and human populations are close to one another, Krampus have been known to roam near people's homes. They do this not to predate or attack, but simply to scare humans into staying away from their own territory. And it works, too. One good look at a full-grown Krampus is usually enough to keep anyone at bay. And that's it for a speculative biology look into the Krampus. While the Krampus's physical appearance very easily translated as a goat-like creature, its behavior and traditions, such as it basically being used to scare children into being good, was a lot of fun to work with. What do you guys think? Does the end result make you want to behave well next year? In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode. While this one was just a short, 
Next up, we'll be having a longer video for another festive creature. And remember, if there's any type of creature you would like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Happy holidays and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.